And what are your thoughts then on course management and strategy? Well, I think it, I think it has to be so personal and individual. And this is where I would have played a bunch of team golf. And, and you have those, these meetings where you're discussing the course. And in later life, I just realized that they were actually just a complete waste of time. Because you were, more often than not, you were, certainly for the younger players that were coming into the teams, they felt obligated and pressured to stick to plan when actually they, it, it wasn't what their eyes saw. So it's a skill that you have to learn, and it's basically managing your, your patterns around a golf course. But you've got you to be recognized how important it is that they're your patterns and that you, you've got your own unique way of getting around that golf course. And just because you might see a top player, oh, all the guys on the team are hitting four iron down there, that doesn't mean you have to do that. And then on, on the flip side, if there's a hole where everyone's hitting driver, that doesn't mean you have to do that either. And, I th uh, and the more I recognize that in players where they kind of do, the, do their own thing, I was like, you know what, that's, that's for me is kind of the very definition of confidence and self-confidence. So sometimes, you know, you're, you hit the shot you're expected to hit and you hit it well and it gives you confidence. But then the self-confident guys were just going to do, no, I'm going to stick to my personal plan. And the, be the best example of that for me playing team, team golf was Graham McDowell. So yeah, he'd be super polite in these meetings and, and say his piece if he was asked an opinion on the whole, but he would literally do his own thing. And, and it might mean on a short, tight hole, where it was recommended by the, the coaching team that he'd hit, <clears throat> hit a four iron, he just hit driver because he didn't care because that's what his eyes saw and that's what he was most comfortable with. Was that an Irish team? Yeah, so played um, played uh, Europeans in Sweden with him when he was kind of at the height of his powers. That was 01 and Michael Hoey. Um, and they, they were really brilliant players at, at that stage. They both spent a little bit of time in the States, but they're, they played foursomes together and they were just, they, if, no matter what nation it was, you, you, you did not want to draw them. They were just two top, top class amateurs at the height of their powers.